This episode and every episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Ironmonger Brewing. Visit Ironmonger at their tap room in Marietta, Georgia, or online at ironmongerbrewing.com. Open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We're broadcasting from the Beer Guys Radio Studios in Marietta, Georgia. And this week, we're talking with Cincinnati's Dead Low Brewing Company. I am Tim Dennis, and with me as always is my good friend and co-host, Brian Hewitt. You know, Brian, I'm already disappointed that I wanted to keep going on little riffs on who you are. Okay. <laughs> but I forgot I forgot to do one this week. So you just you're just gonna have to be my friend. I this could week. just be your friend, Brian. That's Hewitt. it. Okay. That's it. Hey Tim. So joining us today we have Kyle Havens, the co-founder of Dead Low Brewing, and Ivan Demos then, an investor and member of the board. So he's the member of the board. We're gonna talk about wet hops, dark loggers, cincy beers, and maybe even river boats, Tim. River boats. Wow. Uh, guys, thanks for joining us. Yeah, Thank you for having us. Cheers. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, we get around and talk to breweries from all over the place. A fun fact, Ohio is our number three market uh, for our podcast listeners. Oh, yeah. Yes, oh, cool. behind wow. Georgia is number one home state, home turf advantage there. Uh, California. We're big in California, Brian. Yeah, we are big in California. And then Ohio. And, so that's it, Ohio. man. Ohio. Nice. So. Thank you, Ohio. We appreciate it very You're much. You're welcome. It's All very, great yeah, places thanks. to drink a beer. <laughs> thanks so much. Brian, we had a celebration last week. We were we out did. of the studio last week. Uh, we had a guest that, that couldn't make it, but it worked out because I had a birthday. So we went out and we partied, and uh, I did a splurge. No Mike Nate, I splurged. I did. I uh, went for Kobe beef. Kobe beef. A5 Kobe Wagyu, which I did my homework in. Apparently, that is the fanciest grade. Is that the that. maximum number of A's allowed for, th- for steak? I think so. Okay. I think that that is it. I looked up, and if I'm, I'm going to get this backwards, because it, but it's like, and if either you gentlemen know, please feel free to correct me. All Kobe is Wagyu, but not all Wagyu is Kobe. I think it may be the other way around. That's like squares and rectangles. Like all, all okay. squares are rectangles and not all rectangles are squares. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. It's yeah. something along those lines. But anyhow, the one that I went for, Brian, was supposed to be the fanciest pants of this particular steak. And I'm going to throw it out there. I was underwhelmed. I was actually there with you, and I thought it was very good. And know, for see? the price, not sure I would spring for it again, but definitely worth yeah. trying. I thought it was yeah. very good, though. Yeah. Ivan, Kyle, ha- have either of you experienced the Kobe beef? Yes. A- and are you but impressed? It, but it's Is always it... been cooked by us or with somebody I know. I've not done it in a restaurant. If I come up, will you cook me a Kobe steak? Because I need to have this done properly, I hey, think. Tim, actually, the chef here at Deadlow yes? will take care of you. Okay. It, it'll, it will definitely not be an underwhelming experience. Okay, there we go. And I love a good flame-grilled steak. I really do. But I don't think it did justice to this piece of beef. you know. And Brian has got a good car payment out of a piece of steak yeah. like that. Yeah, so, seriously, yes. So, you know, once a time I wanted to splurge and do that, so... Ivan, Kyle, what's the most impressive meal or, or if you expensive, have you ever splurged and just got crazy with it out there? Uh, I took my son for his 16th birthday to like the most expensive steakhouse in Cincinnati because he just really wanted it. So that was his okay. 16th birthday present. So that's probably the most I've ever done. And it's really good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, I don't know that I would do that on the regular, but it was right. well worth it. And he was very happy for his 16th birthday. So that would probably be my splurge. Okay. You guys, are, are you familiar with Jeff Ruby? You know, that I sounds think. familiar. Yeah. Was that, is that the one? Is that the place? Yeah, so okay. Jeff, Jeff Ruby is the king of steaks. He's had a, a couple of uh, lieutenants or underlings that have gone off and, done their own thing. So the guy that started Texas Roadhouse actually worked for Jeff Ruby. Okay. How um, about that? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you've ever been to Peter Luger, this is right up there. Okay. Yeah, so you spend a small fortune when you go there, and it's worth every penny every time. I had to second mortgage my house. (laughs) Totally worth it, right? (laughs) Totally worth it. You know, the funny he's funny. He brings up Texas Roadhouse on the opposite extreme. One of my favorite cheap 
meals yeah. is going to Texas Roadhouse. The steak yeah. there is really inexpensive and it has never, ever disappointed me. It's always been worth more than the price. The tastiest yeah, $18 yeah. dollars you'll ever spend on a I steak. Think, oh, yeah. I think, they, yeah. I think they refer to that as a value meal. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Count me in. Pretty good. So we've got chops and bones, and there's Kevin New York Rath- Prime, New York Prime, yep. and Kevin Rathbun Steak or the Atlanta Steakhouse. House, I think, yeah. is also up there too. House, okay, yeah. yeah. And our little friend group is a Kevin Rathbun Steak fan. And, yes, you know, good stuff. And we go there, and again, not cheap. I don't think it's ridiculously priced for what no, you get. Though. I don't think so, so either. You know, now if you're like our one buddy that likes to get the porterhouse for three. <laughs> so that's like one hundred and fifty dollars just for him. So then, yeah. <laughs> then you can do it. Kevin Rathbun is my gauge for anything that's a fine steakhouse and Texas Roadhouse. If I'm going budget, if you're in that Texas Roadhouse price range, you got to beat them to be worth you going do. back. Yeah, to. and <laughs> I don't think you can. I don't. I've yeah. never experienced it. If it's even out there, I think that's uh, impossible. It would be tough to do. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But you know, anyhow, sometimes you got to splurge, treat yourself, and. Maybe it doesn't work out, but at least you had the experience. At least I had the experience. You know, you, sp- you speak of Kevin Rathburn and the, probably the most expensive and probably one of the, I think some of my most impressive meals have been with him, but the, the most I ever spent for a meal would probably be his charity barbecue that he does where he has entire lambs. It's a big open area. It was at restaurant oh, nice. that's has since closed, but the yeah. package I got included a bunch of Davidoff cigars and, you know, VIP oh, wow. area. I think it was in the neighborhood of three, $400. I don't recall the exact price. It's been like two years, though. And I should throw out that the steakhouse I went to to celebrate had a few of my buddies' beers on, and they were all misspelled. On the, on the menu, so I'll he just, just threw them under the bus I'll directly under there. the bus. Oh, you didn't. You didn't I name. Named, them, so I have not named names. I'm yeah. being kind. I have not named yeah. names here. So, <laughs> well, Tim, I think we need to get into the beers of the week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Brian, I bet you can guess what I'm going to say here, but I'm going to say it anyhow. We've got a great list of beers to enjoy this week. What? No way. So we do. We want to thank our friends at The Nest for sponsoring this segment. Brian, we're on the cusp here of summer and fall. And in Georgia, that's a crazy time. 50 degrees one day, 90 degrees the next. That's the way it goes. I'm not ready to let go of summer, but you know what? The Nest has got you covered there because they have a new covered patio. Mm. Covered. Uh, good for summer or fall, Brian. That's right. And as the football season's coming in, you can go out there, have a good time. As the seasons progress, it's not going to be that long before we're going to be scheduling holiday parties. So, And they've got you covered there, too. Small, large, check them out. The Nest, Kennesaw's got you covered. they got a fire pit out there, too, don't they? They do. Yeah, that's really they nice. They do. That's very enjoyable. Yeah. Well, in my effort to not let go of summer, uh, we're doing a tiki theme this week on our beers of the week, Brian. I enjoy tiki beers. I enjoy summer cocktails. So we're starting out with left hands getting tiki with it, which I think is good. And I, I believe you wanted to do some dancing during the show, right? So we can get tiki with get it. Get tiki here. with it. Yeah. Uh, but that is a pina colada wheat that uh, we're currently enjoying. One from our Georgia breweries, Co- Creature Comforts Athena Paradiso. I'm usually a fan of that whole series of yeah. beers, but pineapple, lemon, coriander in that one. Tiki ish. I'd say if you do a beer with pineapple and lemon, yeah. you, you can qualify. It's in you the proximity qualify. of tiki. Right. We also have Great Divides Margarita Goza. And from Destel, we got Hawaii Five Ale which is a blonde ale with pineapple, coconut, mango, peach, and guava. I think, that's, I think that about and covers all the fruits. Guava. So that's yeah. it. We're, we're getting tiki with it. All four segments there. Yeah, great. It's going to be a good time. Guys, what are you drinking? Ivan, what's in your glass today? So I have this country ale. I think we shared with you about the uh, country hops that we, right. we use. Yeah. I, it was actually news to me. Before we came down to start the podcast, I just said, hey, give me whatever Kyle's having. Easy so enough, it, it man. Is, it is quite tasty. That's usually the way to go. It I'll is. have what Kyle's having. <laughs> yeah. If there's beer being poured, I'm down with it. Let's drink a beer. Absolutely. Yeah. I have a good time yeah. with it. And uh, Kyle, I think we already know what you're having. I think I haven't told him you there, right? Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, that's what's been my go-to here recently. Like we didn't make a whole lot of it, so I'm trying to get it in while I can. Uh, it's gonna go. It's going pretty quick around here, so I'm just trying to enjoy it while we have it. Because it won't be back till next year. And quite frankly, we'll probably do something different with the fresh hops next year. So I'm just enjoying it while it's here. Probably going to be a one-off. That's fun. And we're going to talk about, we're almost out of time here, but we're going to talk a bit more about a country lager. So you're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take a break, but we'll be back very soon with more from Dead Low Brewing.
Headed to the Battery in Atlanta? Be sure to check out the Terrapin Atlanta Brewery and Tap Room. Whether the Braves are playing at home or on the road, the Terrapin Brewery and Tap Room is always pouring all of our locally brewed Georgia beers like Hop Executioner and High and Hazy, while also introducing small batch R&D beers created on our five barrel pilot system right inside the Braves Stadium. And if you're looking for great food, we've got you covered with Fox Brothers Texas Style Barbecue. Stop by and see us today at the Terrapin Brewery and Tap Room at the Battery Atlanta. Powder season is here and the nest in Kennesaw, Georgia has plenty of outdoor space for you to enjoy a cold beer and some tasty barbecue. They've got 48 taps of great beer, wine, cider, and even hard seltzers, plus an impressive craft cocktail list so there's something for everyone. If you're ready for some friendly competition, head over every Tuesday for trivia or relax and take in the local talent with live music every Wednesday and Sunday. Enjoy the great weather while you can. Grab your friends and head to the nest in Kennesaw, Georgia. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Remember, all episodes are available on demand, so if you missed the broadcast, get the podcast. Beer Guys Radio is available on all popular and unpopular podcasting apps. Now, let's get back to Deadlow Brewing. Deadlow Brewing, we teased as we left the last segment, We did. We were talking about country lagers. Yes. And I think we want to talk about that a little bit more. Kyle, can you tell us more about country loggers and uh, what exactly the magic is there? You know, it was something I actually knew nothing about. My brewer came to me, and, and we, have, we have a really great hop farm right down the road. Uh, it's in New Richmond, Ohio, right down the road, probably within five to ten miles, called Boondocks Hops. Uh, it's a small family-owned hop farm. They came to us a couple years ago, you know, asked if we'd want to work with them. And, you know, we were thrilled to have something that close. So, you know, my brewer, Grant Thompson, basically came to me and said, you know, that there's a traditional thing in Germany where it's called a country lager, basically based on the rural regions out there. And the, the whole, whole point of it is to brew, you know, everything locally. It's a deep tradition in Germany, and he wanted to try it. So we don't really have anybody that, that manufactures grains locally or kilns grains locally or anything. So we did go to northern Ohio for the grains. But so it's it's an all Ohio beer, but it, it is a local beer, and it's brewed in the tradition of the country lager. The hops came, you know, straight here. I believe they are Zeus hops. Okay. Um, which is not, you know, a very common thing, but they grow right. them. They, we've actually used them in some other beers here and tried them. They pelletize them as well. Um, these were fresh cones right off the vine and, you know, in wet hop, we wet hop this beer, but, uh, you know, they came straight to us as they harvest them and uh, the beer turned out really well. Is it brewed with a, uh, a Cincinnati captured uh, lager yeast? <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. And Okay. That would be pretty cool. Now, I got to be honest, I can't remember what it would no, it, The yeast is not local. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we don't have it here, but is it is it kind of like a hoppy lager, basically, or is it just enough enough of the the wet hops it's to kind of give it aroma? Just enough of the aroma. wet hops to get the thing. It's not hoppy. It's not piney. It's not citrusy. I mean, it's definitely still a lager. I find it a very interesting. It's very easy drinking. It's but it's like six percent. Like it's still you know, got some bite to it, but there's not a lot of bitterness. It's not citrusy. It's not on the New England side. It's not on the West Coast side. I mean, it's not piney. It's uh, it's an interesting style. It's something that I had not experienced, nor quite frankly, had I ever heard of before he brought it up to me to try it. That's a pretty cool concept. So is that kind of what you guys really focus on as a brewery, like finding the lesser known styles or is that kind of your, your approach to things? Are you more classic styles or do you go more experimental like yeah, this? You know, you know, quite honestly, we don't focus on anything in particular. I, I, you know, we don't focus on a style. I always say we don't focus on a style. We focus to being true to style. You know, our brewer has fairly free reign. You know, we have a few things that we keep on tap. You know, some of them I call business beers, you know, just because they're the ones that sell. And there's other things that have just become popular that, you know, that we like and, and people like them. But Grant is very good at just brewing things true to style. We, we don't focus on a particular style, but when he brews, we, we try to keep things very true to style. Yeah, I can't, can't complain with that. that yeah, true to style is, that's a good thing. Have fun with yes. it. Keep it true I, to style. I, I, do I you? like it. I, I like that we don't have ourselves back to do a niche or, or something that we have to like feel like we have to keep coming with. If he wants to do something, we pretty much let him do it. And, and everything's been, 
you know, very popular and done very well. We have a weird situation here where we're, uh, we're right near a U- very big outdoor concert amphitheater and there's a ballpark right behind us, a softball facility. So All our right. lighter there beers tend to be our bigger sellers. So we have a light lager, a, a Mexican lager, the Shores beer, uh, those things, you know, tend to stay on tap because the lighter side of things here from a business standpoint tends to be a little more popular. And then it, it does allow us to kind of branch out and do things like country loggers and things when we want to do something a little different. You know, it's interesting you talk about kind of staying true to style there. And it just kind of got me thinking that I have seen people complain because breweries get too crazy. Yes. I've seen people complain because breweries are too pedestrian. I've seen people complain because breweries have too many beers on tap. Yes. <laughs> and I've seen them complain because they don't have enough beers on tap. Yeah. So, so what it all boils down to is do you. Uh, yeah, exactly do right. Do your thing. There's going to be people that dig you yeah. for it. There's going to be people that don't. I haven't experienced enough of the loggers of the country to make a fair assessment. But I will say, I think I'm fairly safe in saying that Halfway Crooks in Atlanta is probably in that upper echelon. I would say so. Of yeah. lager breweries. Absolutely. And I saw someone that went in there and they stopped in and like, oh, these guys only had like four beers on the tap. I was in and out of there in 30 minutes. I'm like, well, this isn't the place to go tick your wells. You know, this is the yeah. place you go to get a crisp, clean lager. You sit down and we actually sat down. I kid you not, guys. We sat down and watched competitive sheep herding in the <laughs> upstairs bar while sipping uh, liters of half. Exactly. You know? yeah. They do Kolsch service with the idea is sure. they keep bringing you the same beer. You're not taking off, like you said, the whales are just new ones. You're hanging out, drinking, you know, lighter, refreshing beers for long periods of time, hanging out with people, watching sheep herding or whatever you want. Give me a Pilsner, give me yeah. a Pilsner, give me a Pilsner. Hey, right. Tim, was uh, competitive sheep herding, was that on ESPN? I think it was on the Ocho, the Ocho. probably. <laughs> I bet it was on the Ocho if I had to guess there. Yeah. But they've had, they had the dog show on one time and people are That's actually... Right. They're cheering. I mean, it, just having fun with it, you know? So anything good times. Anything man. can become a big spectator sport if you're playing it for people who are If you got beer. enough alcohol, yes. that's right. If you've right. got Very enough cool. alcohol. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Ivan, let, let's back up a little bit. Deadlow Brewing, how did Deadlow get started? What prompted Deadlow to get rocking and rolling? So, actually, Kyle might be uh, better to Kyle? tell the story, but the tell- way that uh, by the time they got started, interestingly enough, just friend of a friend, uh, knew the family, coached their son in football, and invited me down. And if you've seen the pictures on, um, on the internet, the facility is magnificent, and they spared no expense as well. And uh, it didn't take me long. I uh, pretty much begged to be included. Very cool. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, here I, I, I saw their vision right away. Now, Ivan, do you homebrew? you have any brewing background or are you just a, a beer lover? No, I'm just a beer lover. And I'll tell you this experience I'm learning. Like I'm listening to Kyle tonight. I'm still learning as we ramped up uh, before open. I, some of my best memories, favorite memories are tasting beers and the concoctions that they came up with in the garage. Right. Sure. We, we call them uh, board meetings. So we'd have board meetings <laughs> and, uh, you know, they, we would sample and great times. And some of the things that we tasted were unbelievable. And, uh, yeah, it's been a great experience. They put the beers around on a flight board. That way they exactly. can call it a board meeting. That's the kind so, of board yeah. I want to be a yeah. member yes. of. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, Kyle, if you can, what's the uh, the background? How did you guys yeah, get so started? Just, so, you know, I'll do as quick as I can. So my, my main business partner and I, Paul Ganim, met through my wife actually coached his daughter in soccer, uh, struck up a conversation, ended up both really liking craft beer. He and his brother were in a local, you know, it was basically in a guy's basement brewing collaborative here in the area we live in. There was about 200 guys in, you know, you kind of paid in brewed on this system and we got really into it. And, uh, you know, I had been brewing in my backyard on, you know, a couple pots on a camp stove and just, you know, dabbling, but we came together and then eventually we were like, you know, we, I would really like to do something with this. And I was kind of tired with my day job of 20 years and we kind of just took off. It, it took us about five years to get to the point where we could get to what Deadlow was. We had another location and uh, it fell apart and, you know, we struggled quite a bit to get this going. And 
found the spot that we're in now and it's just kind of taken off from there. I mean, we're, we're lucky to be here even with, I mean, COVID quite frankly, and it's been great. It's really come together. And, and uh, Paul brought his sister, Christine, in. she's got a, a vast marketing background. So we're the three founders and we kind of came together and it, it's been amazing. Sounds yeah. like a good reason yeah, to start a brewery to me, yeah. man. You really can't <laughs> argue with that. So I don't know if we have time for it. So maybe we'll tease it, but I, we have to find out about the name because I didn't know what to make of the name when I first heard it. I'm like, it just totally threw you off. You know did. what? How about, Brian, we're going to fulfill your dreams when we get back. That's okay? right. We should. Do All that. right. <laughs> Until then, we are going to take a break. You're listening to the Beer Guys radio show, and we'll be back with Dead Low Brewing right after this. Best brewmasters are obsessed with creating a high-quality, consistent product. That means reducing mash viscosity for better wort separation and increasing brew house efficiency. Ultra Flow Max from Novozymes helps you achieve both. It is time to brew with enzymes. Increase your brew house efficiency and achieve faster filtration today with Ultra Flow Max from Novozymes. Order a free sample today at www.brewingwithenzymes.com slash beerguysradio. Brian and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks, so you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Next Friday is Hawaiian Shirt Day. So, you know, if you want to, go ahead and uh, wear a Hawaiian shirt and jeans. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our great radio affiliates, Success 1057 on 95.5 FM and 105.7 FM in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Tulsa. Tulsa, o- Oklahoma. Oklahoma. That's really hard for me to say for it some happens. reason. Wow. Put a pen in your mouth. Yeah, I, I really should do that. Yes. Yeah. Catch Beer Guys Radio on Success 105.7 every Saturday at 3 p.m. and Sunday at 10 a.m. Now let's get back to Dead Low Brewing. Dead Low Brewing. Guys, I'm going to make Brian's dreams come true in just a minute. We're going to ask you what the phrase Dead Low is all about. But, Brian, our tiki, tiki tour today. Oh, yeah. Yes. We're on to Destel's Hawaii 5 Ale. What do you think of that one? I think it's pretty solid. I think it's pretty solid. Of the three that we've had so far, I think I like the Creature Comforts one the most, but this is pretty tasty. It's I enjoy festive, the Creature tiki-ish. quite a lot, but I think this one's growing on me. It's a medley, fruit medley. Yeah. A tropical with a medley, medley yes. Brian. So I'm down with it. Fruity, juicy, and tropical, as yeah. it says. It's an awesome okay. name, Hawaii right? 5 Ale. That is killer. Man, beer pun names are the best. They, they really are. The are. So what have we had? We had uh, Getting Tiki with it. Yes, we did. And we had Nitro. Hawaii 5 L. Hawaii so. Five Ale and the Creature Comforts that you got over there. So. Yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Ivan, can you answer, can you solve the mystery of the phrase dead low and where that comes from? Yeah, actually, we were talking about this. I should say that there's a little synchronicity here when you mentioned to Brian to say Tulsa with a pen in his mouth. Okay. When you look up Demosthenes, he's, uh, he was famous for a speech impediment and the way that he cured his speech impediment was by putting rocks and pebbles in his mouth. Okay. Talk correctly, so you can look it up. Uh, <laughs> That's <laughs> just thought I'd yeah. mention that to you. And uh, yeah, so Paul Ganim, the founder, or the person who really came up with the concept, he was uh, the one who came up with the idea. The property here, as we shared, we're right on the river near a huge event space where all the big concerts come and concerts and softball fields. And on the other side is the Ohio River. You can actually see it from here. And dead low is a term that used to be used to uh, let the steamboats know that it was the lowest navigatable point of uh, sailing or 
going through the waters. So that lowest navigatable point of the water, they used to scream dead low. If you look at the logo, you see the lead weight and hence the skeleton. And they used to scream out dead low. That's cool. Yeah. So yeah, if, you, yeah. if you go any further in ground, you're going to scrape bottom and, you know, get exactly. keel hauled or whatever that is. Yeah. yeah. Tear it up. Yeah. yeah. And so uh, Samuel Clements, who had the pen name uh, Mark Twain. Did I miss anything? <laughs> Wait, no, you're, you're, you're on the right track. Yeah, he's the there. Right. He's there. All right. So, gotcha. Uh, Samuel Clemens, he actually used to be one of those individuals who used to scream out dead low when that would happen. And he would write about it in uh, his novel that he wrote. Mark Twain's pen name, actually, they would call out the fathoms. They, they use the term Twain. So they would use quarter Twain, half Twain. So the dead low for a steamboat was two fathoms, which was 12 feet, which was Mach 2 or Mark Twain. Okay. I, so I knew that his that on okay. these boats back prior to his, prior to him writing. So his pen name dead low for a steamship is basically Mark Twain's pen name. So we found that very, you know, kind of fascinating. You know, the other thing was this building we bought sort of dictated the name to some extent. Like the guy that we bought the building from built this place in like 1996. It had a very riverboat theme to it. There's a uh, paddle wheel fan system here that the guy put in that uh, you will not see anywhere else. And I struggle to maintain it on a daily basis. Okay. Like there's nobody to work on it. And and, and it's, so the, the theme kind of dictated us. And we basically just looked at a uh, glossary of steamboat names and whittled down from 100 down to eventually Deadlow. Cool. Another fact that a lot of people probably don't know is that Deadlow was also Mark Twain's rap name. I think so. Yes. That's a, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You guys do your research. We did. We got to do your homework, man. We also went under DJ Deadlow. DJ, DJ Deadlow. Deadlow. And you know, his medallion that he used to wear around his neck yes, was that weight at that. the bottom of it that, that they used yes. to collect samples of the dirt at the bottom. He wore one on a gold chain. Yeah. An extremely large gold chain. That's right. Exactly. A very large gold chain. Peyton yeah. Fences, Huck Finn. That's Huck right. Finn and Deadlow coming at you. Huck Finn and Deadlow. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to just jump right into this. There was something I want to talk about because looking at your beer list, I noticed you had uh, some dark lagers offered up there. And we were talking about these recently. A lot of people will say things like, well, I don't like dark beers or I only drink lagers or, or whatever. And anytime they say those, if they say I only drink lagers, they're definitely not talking about Schwartz beer, yes. Doppelbox, Weizenbox, and all of that. You know, they're talking mm. about they're talking about that country lager. That's what they're talking about, <laughs> sipping on there. And there's people that just don't have any idea that there's these dark lagers out there or people that say, I only like stouts. You know, well, I drink a lot of Guinness. I don't really like lagers. And I think it's underappreciated. I think a little love is starting to come into it there. Uh, but it looks like you guys do get a little respect for the dark lagers there at Dead Low. Is that right? It, it sells very well here. And I think a lot of it's just sort of turning people on to it. But it's, uh, you know, I mean, Schwartz beer literally means black lager. And we, honestly, we didn't even name the beer. Like that's one of our beers. We didn't even put a name on it. We just call it Schwarz beer. We tell our, you know, servers, bartenders to just explain this is simply a black lager. The one thing I love about it is I'm a big fan of stouts. I'm a big fan of porters. This beer drinks like a big, you know, to me, it drinks like a big stout or a big porter. It's got a lot of coffee notes. Uh, it drinks, but it's drinks like a lager as well. That's you right. You can sit sure. and have a few of them. You don't feel heavy. You know, if, if somebody likes dark beer, but they're like, well, I can only have one. Well, you can definitely have more than one with this particular beer. I mean, it's five and a half percent. You know, it's a little high on the lager side of the ABV. In, uh, it's 25 IBUs, I believe. There's a little bit of bitterness, but I mean, it's a, it is a very drinkable beer, but you get a lot of those notes and, and I love it. I mean, I drink it very regularly and we lucked into it quite frankly like we were like we got to keep this beer on like you know we're a fairly small brewer we've we've actually it's a good problem to have but we've struggled to keep some beers on tap and that's sure. one of them we decided to keep on because you know we're, we're kind of you know a lot of people tend to be seasonal porter stout drinkers you know and we're kind of getting back into that season but that's the one 
quote unquote dark beer that we do keep on because you can kind of drink it year round and, and it's not heavy and, and people really have, have, it's really caught on and people like it. Yeah. I was just sitting here thinking about it. how do you get people away from this misnomer that dark beers are strong, they're intense, they're powerful. I'm thinking the only thing you really can do is get them to actually taste it. Say, Hey, this isn't what you expect. It's so pervasive, especially with people who aren't regular habitual drinkers of craft beer. Or, you know, they're just kind of casual beer drinkers. The dark ones are always the strong ones. That's so it. Big, they're strong. They're always just bitter. big right. and bitter and, you know, they knock you out yeah. type of thing. Yeah. So I guess. Yeah, that- Brian, you're totally right because I, I wouldn't consider myself a dark beer drinker. But one of the first beers that uh, we opened with was a Caribbean stout. Oh, yeah. Which Those I thought are nice. was yeah. unbelievable, which may even could have fit into the tiki theme as well but yeah it was completely sure. different than i anticipated and kind of made myself open to you know trying others so i have one of those in a while yeah. i think bars should do something called like discovery day oh yeah and they should have a beer that that day it's a dollar get you an eight ounce pour for a dollar and, that, and that should be it guys you can use that you demo, gotta try can use it. It. see yeah say oh, you know, that idea. i like that idea too yeah but it's interesting it's in all honesty, the people that come in that like dark beers and we like it's dead of summer and we just don't have a lot on, that's the one we turn them on to. The light beer drinkers still tend to be a little apprehensive about, you know, because we tend to have we have a couple loggers that we keep on just because it's sort of, you know, the the clientele has sort of dictated it and it's a seller. But the dark beer drinkers, when we don't have it, and we when I say, listen, you know, like, this is a black lager, but it drinks like a big beer, and you can have a few of them, like, you know, 90% of the time, they really enjoy it. I love nothing more than get me, like, a six-pack of 750s of Santa Claus. That's right. And just kicking back and <laughs> enjoying, man. Enjoying those things, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to talk more about dark lager, other beers, and other crazy stuff. But right now, we need to take a break, Brian. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show, and we'll be back with more from Dead Low Brewing right after this. Have you ever thought about owning your own brewery but don't know what it takes to get one built? We're Storytime Construction, and we build breweries. We're Georgia's most experienced and hands-on contractors when it comes to building new breweries and tap rooms or expanding existing breweries. We offer full build-outs, remodeling, and additions, as well as consulting and construction management. Give us a call at 770-733-4343. Storytime Construction. We build breweries. Have you visited Ironmonger Brewing recently? Take a trip and see the newly renovated and spacious tap room or enjoy the outdoors in their new beer garden with plenty of seating and shade to ease that summer sun. Ironmonger's tap room has a variety of craft beer and hard seltzer on tap with wine and spirits coming soon. Ready for a bit of adventure? Try out axe throwing with Ironmonger's 16 target range. It's a perfect spot for some quick fun or to host your next party or corporate event. So grab your friends and have some fun today at Ironmonger Brewing. the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram what in tarnation now back to the beer guys radio show welcome back to the beer guys radio show if you enjoy the show please consider supporting us on patreon just go to patreon.com slash beer guys patrons get cool perks like beer guys swag and commercial free episodes now let's get back to dead low brewing dead low brewing cincinnati ohio on the river family friendly dog friendly Great food, great beer, the place to be. Did I cover it all? Yes. Okay, good deal. That's so our tagline. That's, that's the it. place to be. This is never going to fit on the business card. <laughs> yeah. so. Well, guys, let's talk a little bit more about your location. We've talked about the beers and that, but you were telling us uh, just as we were at break there, Kyle, you were mentioning great food. Get you a great meal at Deadlow. Is that right? Yeah, I mean, we have a pretty extensive menu. I mean, I, I would call it uh, upscale pub grub, I guess. But, I mean, we have a little bit of everything, but, I mean, everything's really good. I mean, the food really ended up being a lot more than we kind of went into this. We went into this to be a brewery, and we ended up being a kind of a 
little more balanced location with food and beer. Uh, and our the chef that we brought on absolutely killed it out of the gate. And, and the food is very popular here. I mean, we have a little bit of everything. And uh, so, you know, if you like good food and good beer, I can't say anything other than come here and try it. This is the place to do it. Everything's really good. Now, you said you're right on the river. Can we sit on the banks and fish? Is that allowed there? Can we cast a line? We're probably, I would say, two football fields from the river. Okay. We're we're, we're what's considered on the river, you know, uh, in Cincinnati. We're kind of sit right under a bridge that directly connects Ohio and Kentucky, which is kind of nice because it does allow us to uh, bring a lot of uh, Kentucky clientele. Northern Kentucky University is right across the river from us. Riverbank, you know, so the location was key to us buying this building initially when we wanted to start dead low and it, and it's just, it's a really great spot. We don't sit right on the river, but the theme is definitely of the river and the life of the river. I'm a little disappointed. I wanted to ride my riverboat directly up to the front door and get out. Paddle and, just and, spinning right up or there. Or maybe right? if you have like a drive through window, like as I'm floating by, pick up a few beers. At the- my goal is to revert us to the canal system that was here Ooh. back, you know, way back in the early sure. 1900s. You know, sure, like, yeah. That's what I would like to see where you just sort of come right up to the door. Yeah. I will add, he, we've mentioned Riverbend a couple times, the event space, the concert space here. Okay. It's really big here in Southwest Ohio. Dave Matthews performed last night, and the crowd just blew the doors off the place here. That's so, fun. Good uh, jam Jimmy band. Buffett, Kiss, uh, wow. some others. Yeah, whenever, whenever they come down here, they blow the doors off the place. Scotty B, who is the chef. I mean, does unbelievable things, everything from the pizza to the kitchen, creating different sauces for the wings and homegrown stuff to things that they will request from other regions. And then uh, we've got a gentleman, young gentleman, I'll say, named Wayne, who is the most phenomenal (laughs) soup Pierre, what what do you call this? Soupier. A soupier. I call him my personal soup wizard. Okay. I mean, literally, the first thing I do when I come in is always ask what the soup is. It's a puree. It's the soup du jour. A puree savant. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, guys. We we, we call it the soup of the moment here at Devlo because it changes. Like, it goes very quickly. So, it's soup of the day. It's kind of hard to keep up with. So, we call it the soup of the moment. There's always something ready to go, but we do have to change it kind of on a dime. So, we have the soup of the moment. This may (laughs) surprise you guys, but honest story Soup is a contested topic here at Beer Guys Radio. So it is. I, I am a soup fan. Brian, I'm not. Not so much. No. He thinks it's a waste. He's like, it's good food. You're just taking good food and turning it into yeah, a liquid. Yeah, you're turning it into a drink. I mean, so, I, I'll, yeah. if I want to eat something, I want to eat something. If I want to drink something, I want to drink something. I, I can put the two together. I'm just not a big soup person. Well, Brian, I do like chili and stews, though. The, the thicker stuff, I will make exceptions for some of those, but they got to be thick. Okay. Chili yeah. is the soup of the moment from time to time. Yeah. There okay. you go. All right. Acceptable. And so, Brian, <laughs> Brian, if I can change your perspective on things, just like beer, soup is one of the essential foods that really brought mankind to where it is today (laughs) because it was used to put a lot of uh, ingredients with flavor rather than having to hunt for a whole bunch of stuff to make a meal. You just make soup and then feed your family. And so that was essential. So, and then you just finish it off with some beer. So I'm down with that. that way, you know, a beer with, with a nice bowl of soup. And I forget the exact term, but I know like old ends, like old English ends and that would have, they call it like a perpetual stew maybe. Oh, yeah, yeah. But basically you just added whatever veggies or meat or liquid you had. Yes. And you just yeah. kept the stew going, man. That, but Same that's, that's some sick years, stew with yeah. character. Stuff to it. Yeah. That isn't just a pumpkin puree, which I've been told right. is, is some form of food and not like a uh, smoothie. You know, I, I do a like pumpkin a good puree. Pumpkin I'm bisque. like, this is a drink. I mean, have you I, never had a toasted butternut squash bisque with a little nutmeg and cinnamon oh, on it? Right? Now I, you're th- right? I think people have tried now to pawn that off on me as though it were food, and I'm like, no, take your drink away. I will have a beer and I will have a burger. Thank you very much. I see you smacking it out of their hands that's like right. that Saturday Night Live. 
birthday thing. The exactly I threw it on the ground. Exactly, I just smack it directly onto the ground. A burger and a beer, please. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, that was, sir, that was uncalled. That for. yes, and it usually is, and I'm usually thrown out. But that's fine. That's fine. So, what's the number one food and beer pairing? So, food's a big thing there, and you've got all these different beers. What's the best pairing of what you've got there? I mean, the wings are super popular here. I mean, the, the, the sauces are all made in-house. We use, uh, you know, farm-raised wings. I mean, quite honestly, it's wings and a lager. I mean, you know, like that's really the big thing here as far as the the number one seller. But, there, you know, there's things on the menu that are, you know, we do mussels. And we're not a seafood restaurant. Like that's real, other than like a, a shrimp non po' boy that we do. Like that's really the only seafood offering. But like I literally have people that come here regularly because they're it's their favorite muscles. And that's not, you know, like our focus, but like the, the, the kitchen just really kills it on a regular basis. Wings are our big thing here. Like the people love the wings. We've kind of made a name for ourselves with the wings, but we, we have a little bit of everything, but the, the, the wings have, have been kind of the things that kind of put us on the map. Uh, here big, big wings, not not <laughs> like these little tiny wings, big wings. They call them and, party uh, wings, the little ones. Yeah, I don't know party wings. Wings. We, who's we, partying we, with these we little bitty wings. We got hit with the, the, the uh, you know, supply chain issues sure. uh, and couldn't yeah. get the wings that we normally get. So it was a huge deal around here for a couple of weeks. I see that. People are serious about that. You know, we're in yeah, Atlanta. Yeah. This is a wing city, man. We are this very is, much, yes. If yeah. Atlanta has yeah, a signature yeah. food, it now you talk sauces, so has lemon pepper wet made it up to Cincinnati? Uh, that has been a specialty sauce. Okay. Like that's All right. Regulars, you read my but mind. It has made yeah. It onto the menu. Okay. And how did Fire is a big one here. <laughs> tell me, Cincinnati tell fire. me about that one. Tell me about yeah, that one. Yeah, you do the Cincinnati Fire. It is. Yeah. flavorful and you will be sweating <laughs> off your brow. Okay. At the same time, you can mix it with uh, other sauces. So the uh, garlic parmesan or the barbecue, yeah. Carolina kick. Okay. Okay. Blows it out the water, blows out the doors here. It's uh, people love it. They actually use that sometimes for uh, some specialty sandwiches and other other things as well. And I want to say he mentioned the uh, naan. So we have chicken, we have beef. But let me tell you guys, if you are Euro fans, when you get the shrimp naan, it is what you would imagine a shrimp gyro to be if you had a shrimp gyro. <laughs> At it a brewery is, in Cincinnati? Oh, madness. Tim, we're, you don't have enough time. There's even more. You just got to come. Get, get it in sounds that good, man. And make it and up We're going to do you, it. You, we're going to blow your socks off. We'll save the rest for time. Food Guys Radio. <laughs> That's it, man. We'll have to start it up there, man. Yeah, exactly. Sure enough. You know, after this show's done, I need another beer, some chicken wings, and the John Wayne wrap. And then I think we're going to be, go. <laughs> yeah, there gonna you be go. pretty set And maybe there. a, a like butternut party. squash puree or something like yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I put the pinky out, get in there with some croutons. Yeah, the little tiny now, decorations in the center of it. I'll have Wayne's pickle soup ready for you. What do you think of this, you, Brian? When you're talking about a soup that goes with a beer, it'll be waiting on you. It'll blow your mind. I do like pickles a lot, so I'm I'm very intrigued by this. A pickle soup. Uh, Are you torn between your, yeah. your hatred of soup and your Amazing. love of pickles? Yeah, exactly. Pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I, I have mixed emotions. I'm a, a okay. raging yeah. storm of mixed emotions over uh, here. Too. You're going to make it through this, uh, man. You, guys, we are about out of time. We've had a blast chatting with you, learning about dead low, uh, talking soup and kids. And, yeah. Dark loggers and all of that dead stuff, low man. stuff. Yeah. Dead low, DJ Dead Low, having a good time with it. Is there anything else that people need to know about Dead Low Brewing? Good beer, good food, good times. I mean, that's really it. I mean, we're, we're right on the border of Ohio, Kentucky. I mean, it's you know, if you're passing through, please stop in. We've tried to make it a welcoming experience to anybody. It's the place to be right now, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, we're, sounds we're, like it to me, man. Well. <laughs> sure enough, family friendly, and uh, my friend. Thanks for the advice. We'll be having a dollar beer uh, testing. <laughs> there you go, beer man. Yes. I love that idea, actually. <laughs> Discovery. We'll, we'll let you know how it goes. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, See? yeah. Yeah, dead low. Broaden the horizons. Guys, thank you so much. We really appreciate thank it. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, Brian, that about wraps it up for this episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show. But we would love for you to join us next week. And we are going to be talking to Big Draft Brewing out of White Sulphur Springs, West Virginia. Brian, there's a heck of a story behind Is there? our connection with this brewery. So thanks for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Hope you have a great week. Don't forget to drink local. Cheers. Cheers.